friends, and thanks for joining us here at Non-Toxic Home again. As always, we're glad that you're here. We are doing a bit of a series on money, and this is actually our second video, really discussing money, and we are witnessing uh, times that are unparalleled. We are witnessing the controlled, steady destruction of the worldwide economy. Um, so why is now different than it was they're different than before. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have dates. I haven't looked anything up, but um, over the course of time, um, the U.S. has done poorly, and Europe was fine. I mean, they, they weren't reporting anything terrible. Um, recently, um, the Europe tr changed things with their European Union. And um, you heard back when we paid attention to the news, you heard that uh, Europe was doing poorly and the U.S. was fine. So it has happened. The cyclical economy has happened in the past where um, different aspects, uh, different regions in the world, different uh, continents in the world have struggled. But um, why is this one different? Um, why? Why, why are we on video talking about the, the controlled destruction of the economy? It's worldwide right now. So. And of course, there have been times such as in the 2008 economic crash where it might be argued potentially that it was a worldwide thing, but it wasn't the same as it is now because now you have all of the countries in lockstep and by the way i have a video up reading rockefeller's lockstep which i highly recommend because that's part of their game plan they the elite somehow for some reason sometimes have to tell us what they're doing and the world economic forum they're being very open about it uh klaus schwab is the head of the world economic forum and he's very vocal that the great reset is going to be in 2021 and which we're in 2021 right now and we're almost halfway through and so is it going to happen in 2021 it's not up to him quite frankly it's not up to the people who are in control it's up to the most high and a lot of people don't understand that they think that these people who are running the world are the people who are in control and they're not no. they have people above them and those people serve satan and then satan has to get permission to do things from god <laughs> if you yeah. read your bible you know this read the book of job for example uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. What okay. All right. Sorry. I had one more thought. Go, go ahead. You go ahead. Um, she mentioned 2008. Um, the, um, there wasn't, the government didn't, that I'm aware of, in, uh, in the fashion they are right now, um, they didn't print money. <laughs> um, 2008 was, uh, yes, yes, the economy struggled a little bit. Um, but um, it opened the door for um, the surveillance state that we are in. Um, that that was. Um, I think it was nine eleven. Nine. That, that was 9 that was. Um, so in, uh, the there's a big difference there. Um, right now, the uh, and it's it's known in um, with economists. Um, and watch different things that, that will explain that to you but um, it is known it's not it's not it's not a uh, it's not a secret that uh, right now the government's printing money so um, there you have it and it's no secret at all either that the at least here in the US that they are intentionally knowingly decreasing the value of the dollar by immense proportions and all you have to do is just think a tiny bit and, oh, well, where's this money coming from? You know, we don't have gold reserves anymore. Our money is not tied to the gold reserves. So it's basically mm -hmm. fictional money. It's basically, basically just throwing numbers around. And um, that's basically <laughs> what, what money is these days because that's how it works. Now, the Federal Reserve here in the United States and the other reserve banks across the world, they are all... Uh, part of this Babylonian system. They are all in step with the World Economic Forum and their 
in step with the United Nations. It's all one big, I don't even know, want to say it's well designed, but uh, <laughs> it clearly works together if you just listen to them and read some of the documents. And if you look at how the funding works, it's very clear. They're, even the Pope is in on it <laughs> because the Pope goes to all of the big, important uh, you know, money meetings of the world. Yeah. Just, just like we talked about in our last video, you know, churches have boards, corporations have boards, and all these big meetings that uh, they call them summits and all these things. What do you think that is? They're all getting together to discuss what they want to do next. What they're going to do, right. So um, it works. The, our country works just like a corporation. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. And regardless of whether the United States truly is legally a corporation, they function that the United States functions 100% completely at the behest of corporations. And our money is from a, run by a corporation. The Federal Reserve is a privately held corporation. So of course, the people who get together, such as uh, at Davos, etc., are going to be on the same page as far as what's going on. And the Federal Reserves across the world are doing the same thing, printing money out of nothing, rather than actually trying to trying to fix a problem. They're just throwing money at it rather than you know, trying to do something about it because they know that, okay, so they don't know that God necessarily has put it on their hearts, but God has put on the hearts of these evil people to destroy the economy of the world. Now, how fast is this going to go? We don't know. Honestly, I figured it'd be faster than it has been. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you actually read in Scripture, it's clear that the, the events of Revelation and the events of the Olivet Discourse, where Yeshua tells us about what's going to happen, happen over a very, very, very long time. And God is slow to anger and rich in love. He is long-suffering. So, and it, it tells us repeatedly that things are going to be like labor pains, like a woman in travail. And so initially things are going to be very, the events are going to be very long, very far apart. And then at the end it's going to be boom, 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 boom. And that's not something that I came up with myself. That's just what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And it says it multiple times. So God knows that we're not really that smart. And so because he knows that, he repeats things <laughs> to us, especially if it's important. And it's at least at least four verses where it says that the end times are going to be like a woman in travail. It's going to be like a woman having birth pains. And because of that, we don't know how long this is going to take. But uh, obviously, it's not what most people think. There are two... Two thing, two two things that we we know as much as we can. Um, number one, there's a forty year stretch or so where this stuff happens, where the end times take place over. And the other one is that the beginning of sorrows, which is the anger part. Um, God is slow to anger, so um, it's thought that um, this part of the end times will be the longest um, 20 years maybe who knows we, we can't really know but um, what we're talking about is uh, as she said you know um, God is in complete control mm -hmm. he will decide when the actual when when the economy just completely um, as I like to term it blows up. <laughs> <laughs> I love to use that term. I don't know why, but God will determine that, and um, He tells us repeatedly to to look up for your salvation draws near. Um, when we start to see the signs, yeah. You pay attention to nature. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Get out of your TV. Get out of your phone. Um, even if you're not necessarily reading your Bible as much as you should, pay attention to what's around you. Mm -hmm. Use your brain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we are given one. God repeatedly tells us to, to use our brains. Yeah, basically. Hey, you fool. 
think. <laughs> Come up out of the fog that you're in and think a little. And um, maybe you might learn something. So. Yeah, yeah. And this is not intended to scare you because no. uh, if you read your Bible, then you know that you're told over and over and over, don't, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's literally nothing to be afraid of here in this life, period. Nothing at all. And because... There is only one to be afraid of, to have fear, and not like whoo, but not not sitting trembling, uh, because once we once our sins are washed away, which you got to do on a regular basis, you got to this is a daily thing because nobody's perfect. Uh, well, I mean, there there could be a few people who have attained that height, uh, but certainly not us. That's for sure. We're certainly not there yet spiritually, but. Once your sins are washed clean, then we can approach his throne with faces unveiled, unabashed, unashamed. It, it says, study to show thyself approved as a work, approved unto God as a workman who is not ashamed. Because we, once, if you're doing what you're told to do, then there's nothing to be ashamed of. But the signs of the times are clearly there. And the first seal is in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 through two and i saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and i heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see and i saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer now i have discussed this ad nauseum so i'm gonna do it again <laughs> all right so white horse white horse is peace so this, the world is being conquered. Now remember, end times events are not just one area. They are worldwide. Mm -hmm. And this is why so many people have been deceived over, what, 100 years? I don't even know how long. Because they see what's happening in one part of the country or they just see one sign of the times. And they don't see everything. Right now we're seeing precursors to pretty much everything. We're seeing earthquakes in diverse places. We're seeing freaky weather. The sun and the moon are doing crazy pants things, really weird things. Uh, the sun is being like shielded, um, dimmed. According to Gates, it needs to be dimmed. And <laughs> Gates is funny because you need to buy solar panels from his companies, but he's gonna dim the sun. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So. The, the sun's being dimmed. We're seeing precursors to the mark of the beast. I have a video up. Uh, this is not the mark. It's literally impossible. Read your Bible. Know your Bible. Stop following false prophets who just are sharing their doctrines of devils rather than reading a Textus Receptus derived Bible translation and listening to the Holy Spirit. Because remember, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and his ministers do too. You have to test every spirit because there are lots of spirits out there that masquerade as the holy spirit but they're not so we're seeing that we're seeing uh one world currency klaus schwab of the world economic forum is talking all about the one world currency cryptocurrency is part of it as well i've got a video up on cryptocurrency i mean the signs oh the famine is coming we've already seen uh a precursor of peace being taken away with the with the george floyd riots the other race riots and that was just about race. Just wait until there's a famine and people are hungry. <laughs> then peace is going to be taken from the earth. And there's constantly speaking of wars and rumors of wars. That's nothing new at all. <laughs> that's, yeah. been, that's been the case, I think, ever yeah. since I was born, for sure. Uh, so there's all these precursors. And that's not even all of them as far as what scripture tells us. And so it's not just one thing. But the white horse, you've got peace, okay? So the white horse rides, and it's peacefully. There's no war involved. He that sat on him had a bow, but no arrows. Because it should have said a bow and arrows, right? Because if you're, if you're doing things forcefully, there's gonna have, you're going to have arrows. No arrows. And a crown was given unto him. Now, corona literally means crown. <laughs> no joke. As I've already mentioned... The Most High knows that we're not that smart. <laughs> we miss a lot of things. So he has to put things right in front of our face and make things very obvious. Coronavirus. Crown virus. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And he conquered the whole world. So he's conquering 
the whole world as you it was just boom overnight flip the switch the whole world is closed down mm -hmm. shut down and it impacted every single country in the world even those that were resistant to the lockdown and we're seeing the repercussions still obviously and in order for the events of revelation to occur you absolutely have to have a conquering of the current Babylonian economic system. In Revelation 13, chapter 13, verses 15 through 18. And, I, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is in regards to the mark of the beast. Mark of the beast obviously has to do with faith with worship okay so if you if you were one of the 144,000 earlier and you had the seal of god you had the mark of god on your forehead then the mark of the beast isn't going to matter to you but the thing is that most people don't focus on getting the mark of god <laughs> they focus on the mark of the beast and the focus on the mark of the beast has great spiritual significance because if you're focused on that you're not focused on the seven churches of revelation which we did a video on mm -hmm. where it talks about the different types of christians who are going to be around in the end times and what god thinks of what they do mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is some very strong language in there it doesn't you're you're if you're focused on the mark of the beast then you're not going to be focused on what happens to the true believers, the true followers of Yeshua, before the mark of the beast comes around, you're gonna be thinking, yeah, it, it, there's such spiritual significance to it. And false prophets who focus on it are false prophets for a reason. <laughs> they are distracting you from what you really need to be focusing on. In verse 16, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, a lot of people will say, read an NIV translation where it says, he forceth all. Please, do pick up your NIV Bible and throw it in the trash can because it is trash. Satan loves it. I have a video up in which I shared my year-long or so study of the various... Uh, Bible translations and you will be shocked. I was shocked at what I learned. So get yourself a KJV or 1611 KJV, please That no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name So you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark the name of the beast or the number of his name Buying and selling money All right, so yeah. that means and this is for everyone in the world that means worldwide, one world money system, one world currency. So if you have to have a one world currency, there has to be a cause for the one world currency. There has to be a reason. And so this first horse is riding and conquering the world and conquering the economic system. So this is just part of it. This is not meant to, to scare you. You should not be afraid. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of if you're putting your trust in the right place. Period. Right. If you are focusing on videos that cause you fear um, by false prophets, I have a video up sharing a ton of scripture as to how to identify a false prophet. We also have videos up on fear in which we discuss fear. <laughs> Please check those out. All you have to do if you are on YouTube or Odyssey is to click on the little search thing on our profile and you can search fear. And we've got at least two videos up on fear. Fear is addictive. Your body w basically throws out a bunch of different chemicals, one of which is adrenaline and adrenaline is addictive. And so it's easy to get into the fear cycle. And so we have a video up discussing how to step out of the fear cycle. It's not hard. But you can do it. But it's a choice. Mm -hmm. All of these things are a choice. It, you, what you put in here, is your choice. Yeah, there's, there, there's at least one verse that discusses how your eyes are a filter, as well as so, what what you see, what you choose to put in your brain, is what you're feeding your soul. Yeah. 
Yeah. So think about um, that. That that we did a there's a video that we did on that. Um, talked about that a little bit about how you have to decide decide what you put in your eyes, um, or if you're like me that have to go out into the world some, you know the truth. So I mean you you've got to pay attention to <laughs> to things. You can't always decide when you're driving to um, to to not not see evil. But um, you that that's where your sound mind comes into play and, and your your knowledge of what's actually going on. So yeah. So the this destruction that we're seeing is going to continue. It's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. The Great Reset has not been canceled. Some might think so because we're not hearing about the Great Reset anymore. It's just been repackaged, renamed, and now it's Build Back Better. And it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's all the same thing. Now, in different countries, it might have different names. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not in other countries. I don't pay attention to other countries. I love you if you're in another country. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but I live in the United States, so that's what I pay most attention to but honestly we are not really paying too much we're paying very minimal attention to the economic destruction because we know who holds us in his hands and we know that we are far more precious than the birds of the field and the flat the wildflowers and how he clothes those wildflowers and how he feeds those birds and those birds don't so, so, excuse me got tongue tied those birds don't store up food for the winter. Those birds don't do anything to prepare for the season, but they're fed, they're cared for, they're loved. That's not to say that we aren't doing anything to prepare, because we are. We're not preppers, but we just see what's coming. And so as a result, we are listening to the Most High as to what he, if we need to do anything to prepare, and if so, what we need to do to prepare. And... There's also, there are series out there, right? I mean, right now it's free. Um, it's more mainstream minded, but uh, it gets the point across. Um, there, it's called Endgame. I forget the dude's, this, the, the dude that runs that. It's from Revealed Films. Revealed Films. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of series on a lot of things, but um, you probably have to, um, by the time there's probably another what, five weeks I think left of it, but um, it goes over. He talks to basically mainstream experts about what's going on and how to how to prepare yourself. Um, but so that that is a worldly perspective. That's a worldly perspective. It's one hundred percent worldly. And uh, the one guy that we watched in that series mentioned something about aligning yourself with the Fed because there's no, no other force stronger than the Fed. No, right. do not align yourself with evil. <laughs> the, the reason I bring that up is because um, it does have some good information mm -hmm. in it. It does have mm -hmm. some what we would call sound mind information in it. There's a lot of there's a lot, a lot of videos we didn't watch. Um, crypto. Just cryptocurrency, um, Bitcoin, all that. Um, we don't we, we didn't watch that stuff it's talking about a there's there I think there were two two videos on there that talked about how to prepare yourself where you're where you're at and the mindset that you should have um, based on the, the setting that you're in Ver city mm -hmm. right living in a city versus living in the country and the different mindset mm -hmm. that you can have uh, based on those two situations, um, we'll talk about that stuff in a, in, a, in a little bit here. But we're just you—you you have to approach this stuff grounded in this book and know what this book says for yourself, not from what we say it says yeah. at all. No, well, <laughs> go read yourself. Like she, for yourself. like she said, we're not looking to scare you. We're looking to inform you. You need to be prepared and mentally. You, it, 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 and I'm not going to lie to you. The, the things that we t I just talked about in the, the end game thing, they take time. <laughs> um, you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have a little bit of time to get, as they called it, and I would agree with it, get your house in order. 
for those things. Um, it doesn't just happen overnight. You can't see you can't see a tornado coming at you from and have time to uh, throw something together. You just it's just not 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 how it works. Right. But we have a video up uh, preparing for the Great Reset, which I highly recommend checking out. The fact of the matter is that the most important preparation anyone can possibly do is spiritual preparation. And we are prepared for spiritual warfare. We are prepared for spiritual battle. We know that most of the true followers of Yeshua will be saved. And it's not going to be via a rapture. We are... Um, I can't think of the verse. Isaiah 57.1 says, A good man dies, and no man taketh it to heart. But no man considereth that the righteous are taken away from the evil to come. So just as my parents passed away too young and my grandparents both passed away at 99, but, I mean, I think they could have. My grandma, my grandma had more time in her, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, she was a fighter. She was a fighter, yeah. She was a feisty but one. <laughs> she, she was a good woman. And at 99, she would have been first in line being forced into the you-know-what. And she always hated pharmaceuticals. She did not want to take pharmaceuticals unless she absolutely had to. Mm -hmm. Because she knew how it... She had a sound mind. Even though she only had, I think, a sixth grade education, mm -hmm. uh, as she commonly said, like spoke lowly of herself because of that, she had a sound mind and she knew how those things made her feel. She knew that she couldn't think, she couldn't feel, she didn't feel as connected to God, all these other things. And so she didn't want that. And she would have been forced. I have no doubt she would have been forced to get that at, at age 99. I have uh, so, very fond so. memories of that, yeah. of, of, of her. She, uh, she was the first. There were, there were times, we, we have had times in our marriage where we have s struggled um, both with our marriage and financially. And I remember talking to her at their kitchen table during one of those times. And she's the first person to be super sweet to you, but she's also the first person to tell you how it is, mm -hmm. and ask you point blank, just like just like a parent might, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? Um, and th those kind of things. But sweetest woman ever. Uh, her her food would just stick to you. I loved it. It's just it was awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, but so. We know that what Isaiah tells us, we know that God saves his elect. Well, not all of the elect. Obviously, there are the 144,000. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be prepared to be part of the 144,000 because no one really knows uh, whether they are of Jewish descent or not, quite frankly, uh, genealogically speaking. And so you have to be prepared for both. You have to be prepared for the beheading. You have to be prepared for the guillotine. Because if you aren't aware of that, then uh, please check out my video on Noahide laws. Because that's a fact of the matter. Noahide laws exist. They've been on the books in, in the United States since the 90s. And I believe that is going to be the true rapture uh, that is for most of the true followers of God. If you are not uh, living a life that is different from the rest of the world, you probably won't be on the Noahide list and that's a list you want to be on we want to be on that list because if you read the events of Revelation <laughs> wow um, the the things that are gonna happen are gonna be very difficult yeah. to live through and that's just to say the least I mean we can't even compare it to anything fictional or real that's ever happened right because it's never happened. This sort of judgment has never come upon the world before. Right. There has been judgment of other worlds, such as Luciferia, but not to this extent, because all mountains are gonna flee, all islands are gonna flee. Can you imagine what the world is gonna look like when there aren't any mountains or islands? I mean, just that in and of itself is pretty substantial, <laughs> I would right. say. So, if, I, I, I guess, a relatively simple way to, to look at things here with, with these being on these lists um, if you think that the economy is going to continue to be cyclical and it's going to have its ups and downs if you 
once you know things are starting to open up in the world again, um, if you think that you can just just get back to normal life, you know, celebrate all your holidays, uh, get together for Christmas, just la di da, and think that there's nothing on the horizon, just keep living your life as you did back in say 2019 and many years before that. Um, you are probably going to um, be in the realm of being, um, there are verses in Revelations where it talks about different serpents and different, different things. Um, just, uh, um, oh, I can't think of, my brain is not, not letting me, if something annoys you constantly and just, is always after you persistent persistent that's not the word that's in the bible but i can't think of it anyway um there are there are plagues there are all sorts of nasty things that uh, that come out if you continue to think that life isn't going to change and that you don't have to do anything different you're going to be um you're going to have to deal with that um if you are doing everything you can to follow the Most High, if you are, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing, you know, we're not we're not guaranteeing ourselves anything. We're just we feel very led to make sure that uh, this information gets out there, and um, those kinds of things are going to get you on the list to be beheaded because the government is, you know, it's a surveillance state. That's how do you think they're going to figure that stuff out? Right. That's the whole purpose of the surveillance <laughs> state is to, it, well, for one, it's control, obviously, but it's also gathering information. They've got databases on who is a real Christian and who just goes to church on Sunday. You think they don't know? You think they don't know who goes to church just to make themselves feel better? Yeah. You, what? Yeah. And look at all of the Alexa, de well, I'm not, I, I, I take that back. All of the devices that are in your home that connect to the Internet of Things. I don't want to get sued. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're yeah. going to say. Right. But look at all of the devices that listen in on you. And I think it was, and I didn't even know this until a couple years ago, but apparently there was a thing, I don't know if it was in the 90s or something like that. We have a friend who knows, but um, where they found video cameras and stuff in TVs, like just regular TVs, mm -hmm. which is seriously creepy. Um I don't know anything about that, obviously. <laughs> that's that's my extent of knowledge about that. But the fact of the matter is that we know that cell phones are spying on us. Even when they're turned off, they are spying on us. The, even the cars with GPS are spying on us. Everything, if it connects to the Internet of Things, is. And anything you upload to the Internet, social media, do you, do you really know the truth about Facebook and where social media really came from? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Not, it's, it's not, not what we're told. It's not. It's not all the one guy. No, it's not what we're told. And if you think that the alternative social media platforms are true beacons of freedom, and they won't be either shut down if they really are true beacons of freedom, or if they aren't being used to mine data as well, then you are deceived, my friend. <laughs> because it's not that difficult uh, for viruses and Trojan horses and such to. To, to, to get access to that information. So those who are truly, truly following the Lord, um, for the most part, will be saved, but it's not going to be, we're not going to be like all of a sudden vanish or something like that. That is insane. That is ridiculous. That's not at all what the Bible says. And if you just read things in context, you would know that. <laughs> yeah. Just sit, literally sit down for... Um, one or two days on the weekend and read Revelation. Read the King James Version of Revelation or mm -hmm. the 1611. That one's a little harder. Um, and read it. Mm -hmm. All of these things that these false prophets out there are saying, there's nothing in there about it. Right. They'll take a verse from one of Satan's favorite translations and then they sometimes they'll just use that as is. Other times they'll take it out of context, and um, most of the time they'll even twist that, and they'll have to take an extra biblical book <laughs> to make their case about something. 
And a lot of times I'll just take one or two verses and have an entire sermon, an entire two hour sermon or whatever on this. When if you just read it for what it says Mm -hmm. or contextually, like the twinkling of an eye, that is at the very, 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 very end of Revelation. <laughs> That's a, if, and if you're reading things contextually, sometimes it's talking about the resurrection of the dead. And it's not talking about, you know, what happens before the events of Revelation at all. But most people would rather just have their ears scratched and believe that nothing mm-hmm. difficult, that nothing difficult is going to happen to them because, um, that's, they think that that's what God has promised us. And God has not promised us that at all. We are exhorted in multiple times in the New Testament to call it all joy. That And in, even in the Old Testament as well, it discusses how we are being refined mm-hmm. uh, like gold in the fire. Do you really think it's going to be, if you're being refined by like gold in a fire, do you think that's going to be easy? <laughs> it's going to be a cakewalk? No, it's going to be hard. (laughs) Being refined by the Lord is hard. (laughs) It sucks. (laughs) There's nothing, well, I can't say nothing, but we are called to be stewards of the land that we live Mm -hmm. on. And do you think if you buy a woods and you actually cut down the trees, to build your house, do you think that's easy? Right. <laughs> Even with a chainsaw? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that's just one tiny little aspect of it, but it is a lot of hard work. And even way at the end of Revelation, where it talks about what the new world will look like, that where there's no sickness, none of that, we are still called then to live off our land. We're, so that work of building your house and growing food and things, that is still there. Right. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so we're not getting out of that. And But, um, so yeah, please listen to her when she says, and, and to me really, um, it's not easy. And those false prophets that are out there saying that um, there's an easy way out, being, I'm sorry, but being, it takes a while to prepare your heart and your soul for being ready mm-hmm. to be beheaded. It that does. Takes, that takes, that, that, that does not happen overnight. That does not happen with one reading of Revelation or any other verse where, I mean, I think one, what is it, one third of the Bible is prophetic. Prophetic, Mm -hmm. prophetic. Right. So, um, go ahead. The other thing to keep in mind, though, as uh, time marches on, is that it's very clear. We it is specifically stated that part of the events are sealed. Daniel was told. Was it was it Daniel or was it Isaiah? I think it was Daniel. Was it Daniel who was told that was sealed? I think it was Daniel. I can't remember now. I think it was Daniel who was told that uh, part of the events of the end times will be sealed. And the same thing was said to John, and John wrote the book of Revelation. So we're not going to understand a lot of these things that happen later on, but we don't need to. We need to know what's going on right now. We need to open our eyes, see what's going on. Some of these things, like I said, we can see the precursors of. And God gives us a sound mind. If we ask for it, he will. If you ask for wisdom, he'll give it to you. But you have to ask, Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to mean it sincerely and this wisdom tells us the times that we are living in and as we mentioned previously there are of course many people who have come along and said you know like eg white in the 1850s or whatever that was she said that oh it's the end times and so she was declared a false prophet within her lifetime but people are still following her (laughs) that just goes to show how false prophets, if they scratch itchy ears, their words <laughs> will last and impact a lot of people because people want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. So we hope that you have appreciated and enjoyed our sharing of the truth with you as to what's going on. Fear not. There is absolutely nothing to fear. 
money is just a tool and be thou content with food and raiment that's specifically what it says in the bible are you good are you done yeah okay all right thanks so much for being here friends have a most beautiful and blessed day